Welcome to Real Bass Lessons. We're in for a treat today because my good friend Rob Gourlay came here. Glad to have you, Rob. Glad to be here. Rob and I have taught together, you know, performed, recorded, written books, and uh, studied together for many years, and it's always a pleasure to have Rob around. Great to be here, Jim. Thank yeah. you. Uh, today we're going to talk about and get into learning the jazz language. And I'm not talking about learning theory and chords and scales. I'm talking about the sounds from the great players, okay? Rob recently just published a new book that totally inspired me. And his newest book here is called Walking in the Footsteps of Paul Chambers, Volume 2. Why don't you talk a little bit about it, Rob? Sure. Um, this is the uh, the second book that I've done on Paul Chambers. The first one was uh, just had a bunch of jazz standards and a couple blues and the rhythm changes in it. And I just wanted to explore that further, what he had played on all the different recordings that he had done because his work on the blues and rhythm changes is just incredible. So that's uh, where the uh, the beginning of that was just to, to you know dig further and see what what, did, what does he play uh, with all the different uh, on the different recordings and with all the different people that he had uh, recorded with. This book 78 pages long and it looks like it's split in exactly half. The blues part starts on page 40. So yeah. we got half of it as rhythm changes and half of it as blues. You can't get asked for better stuff than that, okay? Let's start by playing just a little bit, and then we'll talk sure. more, okay? Sounds good. Let's do a blues and F. I got the bass line, and uh, you play whatever you like. Let's get our metronome going here. I'll take the first chorus, and you join me after. Sounds good. Two, a one, two, three, four. That's it. That was real nice. Let's talk about it for a second, okay? Sure. Now, I don't know if uh, you folks out there know or not, but the very first thing I played when I did my bass lines, I went like this. Guess what? That's the first measure <laughs> in Rob's book of PC playing. Now let me introduce you to something else. Here's a new book that I'm just about finished with. It's not out yet. It's called Jazz Bass, Architecture and Language. And it is, whoa, it is full of those kinds of pieces of stuff. Mm. Um, what can you say about that you've discovered, Rob, from, from transcribing all this about PC's architecture? Uh, just that there's a lot of repetition in it and there's a lot of great lines that you can uh, get into your playing pretty easily when you, when you see how he does certain things. The repetition with little variations, but it's yeah. really something you can, uh, very accessible, I guess. Is oh, you bet it is. One yeah. of the things that I think younger players or I know that they think, and that is, man, it has to be like just unbelievably creative and different all the time. Mm. No, there's tons of repetition in PC's lines. Listen to this. I'm going to play the first four bars. Did 
Did you notice that the third measure is the same as the first? <laughs> he does that it's all magic. the time. Yeah, magic, yeah. right. Um, that's a big part of it. What you need to do is simply get yourself, not lots of recordings, one recording of a great player. How about like PC or Ron Carter or Ray Brown or maybe even Christian McBride? I know there's lots of other guys, but those are great walking players. And just simply steal one chorus, analyze it, and work out that architecture. How do you practice it, Rob? How would you go about practicing to you know, for somebody to get this kind of stuff in their plan. Well, that, I mean, working with just the one chorus and just lather, rinse, and repeat, you know? <laughs> Let's play it together. <laughs> just, Can you just read it Just play that here? over and over and learn that and memorize it, which a lot of people have never done, you know, have never Agreed. memorized it, including me when I, I think that Ron Carter thing was the first thing that I had ever Rob, memorized. That, that was so. the first thing I ever learned oh, back really? in 1976. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's I could already play good jazz bass, but I didn't have the real lines. And I learned that one too, that Ron Carter line. Let's play this first yeah. 12 bars together. Sure. You can read it, can't you, from there? Yep. A one, two, three, four. Outstanding, yeah. outstanding. Do you hear what Rob said earlier, a little nice little phrase? What'd you say? Wash, rinse, lather, R how'd you say? Lather, rinse, and repeat when exactly. it says on the shampoo bottle. It's great musical advice. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's nothing magical about this. That just sounds great. And you know what? If you will learn that and play it, not one person, decent musician, will say, oh man, you repeated yourself. No, they'll all say, that sounds incredible. Do it some more. Give me some more of it. Sounds great to me every time. Oh, good. Yeah. Yes. I've never gotten tired. I told somebody not long ago, when I first learned my first Ron Carter line, I played it over and over for six months. And they said, you mean the same one? Didn't you get tired of it? I said, I liked it. Everybody else did. It didn't get old. It was golden, man. <laughs> it was like, it was like yeah. gold. Who gets tired of gold, huh? Yeah. How cool. There's a, in, in Jim's new book, there's... The, one of the lines in it before this, before my book was even written, he's playing the line from that uh, in one of them that you mentioned. I did just, not look at your book so, and steal uh, it. It's that's magic, is what that. Yeah, is. What that is is that's years and years of studying the great players. Let's play it. Here's the first example from my book together. A one, two, three, four. Again. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I have said this before, and it's the truth. When it comes to music and jazz, there is not an original bone in my body. I just simply copied the great players, and it always worked great. Absolutely. Yeah. What else you want to say about this, Rob? Just that, I mean, this is just really exciting stuff to work on, and the way that you can incorporate that into your playing by just memorizing some of these is, is uh, really an easy thing to do, really. I mean, just it, it takes time, but oh. it's certainly something that will affect your playing immediately and, and great stuff to work on. So be, uh, be on the lookout for this new book. I can't of wait course, to get a copy of course. it. Um, <laughs> I swear it's part of music education today. It's a lost art, and it's called practice. Now, mm. people say, well, I practice. No, what is practicing? Practicing is the repetition of a predetermined idea. See, all that stuff before you have your bass in your hand actually playing, that's not practicing. And if you're not careful, a whole bunch of noodle around is not practicing. No, predetermined, what am I gonna work on, and then how many times can you repeat it? That's called practicing. To quote a student of mine, 300 times is not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it took me and PC and you a lot more time than that to learn this stuff. And sometimes people say, well, yeah, Jim, but I don't just want to learn a line like this. Well, to start with, I don't know why. It sounds great. But I know why they say that. Quote, I want to do my own thing. I don't want to lose my originality. Do you realize, let me put it another way. Do you understand that concept of theme and variation? Sure, everybody does in music. It's sort of a classical term, but it's in all music. Well, did you know that if you work on the theme, oh, so much, you'll start just sort of making variations. Do you know what we call that in jazz? Improvisations. So yeah, just because you learn a line like this and play it perfectly like thousands of times for a year or two doesn't mean you can't vary it. Of mm -hmm. course you can. Yeah, I, I think one thing that I said, I said it was easy, I but I didn't, it uh, it was simple, but it takes a lot you of time. You bet, yeah. yeah so don't that, that's a, a you know, don't one time right. isn't what it is. Don't it. confuse easy and simple. Yeah. No, it's exactly. a fairly easy thing to understand. It ain't simple to you do it like that. Lather, rinse, and repeat. That's it, a lot. And by <laughs> like the way, you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that becomes the talent. People say, oh, these kids are so talented. Well, no, that's when they're little kids. What does it mean as an adult? That means it's a hard work and is willing to repeat it, okay? Good. Let's play one more nice little groove thing, okay? Yeah. Do the same thing, man. Except we won't play their lines. Okay. Ha ha ha. <laughs> you got a solo. I'll play a bass line. Blues and that. A little faster. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. That's enough. What I wanted to do was to illustrate, and that is when I stopped playing the bass line and started comping, you could still hear that bass line going on, couldn't mm. you? That's what happens mm. when you'll repeat a single line all oh, so much. It gets inside you. It gets inside your head, and you hear, and you're in a hearing, and you're playing, and you can just hear it and feel it. Wait, and there wasn't a bass line? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then you don't have to think about what I'm going to play. It's just going on inside mm. your head. And you do that enough, and you start to hear the piano company and the drums inside your head. I learned to comp on piano and understand how to play a little bit of drums just by working with a lot of PC. I was listening to Red Garland and Philly Joe or uh, Jimmy Cobb, whoever was on the records. But yeah, so the point is, is it's just repeated listening. Hmm. And again, not of a lot of stuff. We're talking about just a little bit of thing over and over and over and over. Say it one more time. Rinse what? Lather, rinse, and repeat. That's it. So that's that's our new model. Matter of fact, it's our okay. next book. That's a new book. Yeah. That's Lance Rather. Yeah. And and and, and I maybe I'll never get a wig. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Actually, you realize in a biscuit or a bowl of soup that would be a lot of hair. So that's all it is. Okay. Rob, thanks a million. Thank you. Cool, man.